In this video, we'll be going over the powers of I. So how to simplify expressions where I has a greater exponent than um, one. But before we go into some problems, let's see as we go through these examples in completing the table, um, what pattern, if you see a pattern here. So here with I to the zero power, you just need to remember that if I have an exponent of zero, right? So with an exponent of zero, anything to the zero power, right, is one. So I to the zero power, even though it's I, I to the zero is one. Then any base to the first power. So any base to the first power is still just going to be that base, right? So um, here, i to the first power is still going to be i. Now, i squared. i squared, if you recall, um, in talking about this, i squared, well, if the square root of negative 1 is equal to i, right? Then if I were to square both sides to get rid of my radical, so that's the inverse operation, then notice how i squared here, so on our right side, i squared is equal to negative 1. So i squared is going to equal negative 1. So then i to the third. Well, i to the third, if you were to break down now we, with um, to the third power, i cubed is the same as i to the first times i squared, right? Because here, with our rules of exponents, we um, take the exponents and we add them, 1 plus 2 giving you that um, power of 3. So i to the first is i here, and then i squared, as we just discussed, is negative 1. So i times negative 1 is negative i. Then last is i to the fourth. Well, i to the fourth is um, the same as, well, i squared times i squared, right? So again, adding the two exponents, 2 plus 2 is 4. So i squared, well, i squared again is negative 1 times negative 1. Negative times a negative is a positive. So you should now actually start to see the pattern. So let's say I extended this and I went to i to the fifth, right? So i to the fifth is the same as, well, I could write this as different ways. I could, let's say, write this as um, i squared, right, times i cubed, because two times two plus three is five. So now, if I were to simplify, i squared is negative 1 times i cubed is negative i. Now, notice a negative times a negative is a positive, so you're just left with positive i. So now that I even extended it more, you should notice the pattern here that here we have i to the zero, i to the one, i squared, and i cubed. And really, nothing new after that, because i to the zero power is one, i to the first power is i, then i squared is negative one, and then i cubed is negative i. Then notice we start all over again, right? We go one i, negative one, negative i. So notice this little pattern here. There's really, when we're simplifying, no other solutions. So it's going to be with this pattern here and then starting over. Now, how could we also do this instead of just extending it, kind of like what we did the pattern here? So there's kind of like a little shortcut or a trick. And we're going to call it the quarter method. Well, quarter, right? Quarters are 25. There are four quarters in a dollar, right? So this means we're going to take and think about um, that exponent and dividing it by four. So we're going to take our exponent and use the quarter method. We're going to divide by four. Notice how we have the four values, so think about it like quarters. 
I'm going to divide by four here, and then we're going to look at the remainder. Whatever the remainder is, however many quarters, that's what it corresponds to. So like, for example, if you end up with a remainder of that 0 0.25, well, that is one quarter. So that would be represented by I to the first power, and then we use our pattern. So looking at these examples, well, actually, you know what I realized before we do, let's go ahead and write out that pattern so that we have it here um, for our visual. So I to the zero, right? Anything to the zero power is one. I to the one is I, right? Because any base to the first power is still that base. And I squared is negative one, leaving us with I cubed is negative I, all right? Um, so now here's how we do the quarter method. We're going to take our exponent, so in this case, 99, and we're going to divide it by 4. That is the quarter method. So 99 divided by 4, when you put that in the calculator, you get 24.75. But now we're just looking at the remainder. So we're just looking at the 0.75. Well, how many quarters is 75 cents? three quarters. So I to the 99th power is the same as I to the third power because you get the um, 75 as your remainder, which is three quarters. Now look at the pattern. What is I to the third power? Negative I. So I to the 99th is the same as saying negative I. So again, here we go. Notice how we have the exponent of 17. So again, we're going to divide by 4, right? So using that quarter method, divide by 4. When you divide, you get 4.25. So now notice the remainder, right? We're not focused on the 4. We're focused on the remainder, which is 25 cents. So if I have 0.25, how many quarters is that? Well, that is just one quarter. So this here, i to the 17th, is the same as writing it as i to the first power. So now what is i to the first power? i. Now notice in the third example, see how we have a coefficient? So make sure that in the end you multiply the final answer by 4. All right? So here we go. We're going to take that exponent of 120 and again divide it by 4. So now when you divide by 4, you get 30. Well, notice how there is no remainder. So if there's no remainder, technically this is the same as like 0, 0.00, right? So if I have the remainder of 0 because it's a whole number, bring the 4 down, so 4 times, but now instead of putting i to the 120, we now have i to the 0 power. So notice how because this is just zero quarters, now we can solve. So this is four times, well, what is i to the zero? One. Sorry, I don't know what happened there. i to the zero is one. Four times one is four. So that's how we're going to simplify here. So again, notice how we have the coefficient of one fourth. So make sure to bring that down as we're going through and simplifying. We're going to take that exponent, right, and divide it by 4. There you go. So again, putting um, our exponent and dividing by 4, you end up with 16,000.5. But again, we're only focused on the remainder. So if I have 0.5, or if you think about it, right, that's 50 cents. How many quarters is that? That is 2. So notice how we're going to bring down our one-fourth here, right, that coefficient. And now instead of putting i to the 64,002, we're going to put i to the second power because we had two quarters. Now we can continue simplifying. One-fourth times i squared is negative one. One-fourth times negative one is negative one-fourth. So now go ahead and pause the video and try these four U-tries on your own.
And so before I start going over, let's go ahead. I'll write the, um, sorry, I'll write our pattern up here. So I to the zero is one. I to the one is I. I squared is equal to negative one. And I cubed is equal to negative I. So again, we're going to first divide our exponent by four. So when you have 14 divided by four, you have 3.5. So notice how 0.5 is two quarters, 50 cents. So this is the same as I to the second power, which is negative one. So going on to the second one, again, take the exponent, divide by four. So 63 divided by four is 15.75 but focusing on the remainder of 75 cents, that is three quarters. So 0.75 is three. That means this is the same as I to the third power, which is negative I, according to our pattern. Then here, notice you did have a coefficient, so keep in mind, multiplying by one half at the end. We take our exponent, divide by four. So seven divided by four is 1.75. So again, notice our 0.75 represents three quarters, but make sure to bring down the coefficient of one half. One half times, now not i to the seventh, but i to the third power, i cubed. So now continue simplifying, right? One half times one to the third power is negative i. So notice how this is a little tricky here, but negative times a positive is a, negative, so negative one-half i. Then the last one, same thing again. Notice how you had a coefficient of negative six. So don't forget about multiplying your final answer by negative six. Divide the exponent by four, and you should have gotten 10.5. So you should have gotten 10.5, which again, looking at the remainder is 0.5 or 50 cents here, right? So now this becomes negative six here. Oh, I'm sorry, which is an exponent or um, of two. Now bringing down here our coefficient of negative six, right? So negative six times, not i to the 42, but i squared. Then again, continue bringing down negative six times, i squared is negative one. Negative times a negative is a positive six.